go, go, Power Rangers! What's up, guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Dev Pro Duel video in Ranked. And this time I'm playing with the Super Quantum deck. Not Super Quantum Monarchs. No, no, no. The Super Quantum deck itself. Uh, that This is actually Calvin Tahan's exact list of what he played and won ARG Richmond with. Uh, so I've been testing it around. I've been, I played it a lot on uh, on my live stream that I just got done doing, and uh, basically was learning the deck as I went. And a lot of people really seemed to like that whole uh, experience of I'd only played the deck like once or twice before I started streaming, and so <laughs> I was literally doing plays and I was like, all right, uh, let's not do that again. Um, as I would, if I'd make plays that like weren't optimal, I'd be like, all right, note to self, that's not good. Um, things like that. Things of that nature. Uh, I really didn't really want this, but I guess it works. So red layer and blue layer can trigger, but I don't want blue layer to trigger here. Uh, so red layer can actually just summon. Well, red layer can be soul charged as well as this can be soul charged. Uh, so I should have Magnus here. Um, no questions asked, because I can discard this for the field spell to overlay this. Uh, but basically, if you don't know what Magnus is, Magnus is the Megazord, the giant Megazord that you put like seven materials under, and you basically just try to get it to uh, to be big enough to just get uh, which would do dead. What am I trying to say? Uh, to be unaffected by card effects uh, and be mistaken. It's basically Apocalyphort Towers, but much better in the form of it's also a built-in mistake and it's also a built-in uh, Castell that doesn't target. Um, like, it's absolutely insane. Uh, but, so, this thing... This field spell is ridiculous, by the way. In case you didn't know, this field spell is absolutely ridiculous. Um, just letting you rank up into these things for practically free. Uh, just lets you get a lot of things moving in the way that they need to be. Uh, but, let's see, I can actually... I can actually make two of... The I can actually make two of the red dude, um, and I can make Magnus with one of them and leave the other one out there to just be a further area of uh, protection. Uh, Soul Charge is definitely not needed for you to do these combos, but it certainly just helps. Like 100%, it does just help. Um, but to this, I can use this and make everything uh, level 5 that has a level. So the Garnet's 5, it's 5. Uh, it's really good. But, so... I can overlay this and the red layer into this, and then I can activate this and use these three Xyz monsters, which are all very good in their own right. Even if you can't make Magnus, having all three of these out is absolutely ridiculous, because this is an MST during either player's turn, this is a Book of Moon during either player's turn, and this destroys a monster during either player's turn. They're all Pleiadeses, but they basically all get constructed into this one big giant megazord now let's read what this guy does shall we three level 12 monsters but that's obviously not how you summon it you summon it with this field spell and it's if this card is sent to the graveyard you can special summon three super quantum mech beast exceeds monsters with different names from your graveyard so all three of the ones that you made they can't attack when they don't have materials but you can summon them from grave and just wall with this thing uh if this gets sent to the graveyard in any way and its effect is this card gains effects based off the number of seized materials with different names attached to it. Two or more, once per turn, during the player's main phase, you can attach a seized material, shuffle one card on the field into the deck. Four or more, unaffected by all card effects except super quant cards. Six or more, your opponent cannot add cards from the deck to the hand by card effects. That includes drawing, all that. And so he currently has one, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight materials, and seven of them have different names, because there's a duplicate here, so he has seven plus materials. Um, but to give it another form of protection, uh, we're going to go into Panzer Dragon here, even though we could have done Norden um, easily, but uh, this will just make another one of these because they are all generic, and so now I can spin a card and I can pop a monster, and my opponent can't add cards. Basically, this deck is literally, you take a massive minus into Great Magnus, but even if you don't make Magnus, all of those cards that you summoned were all very good and all have very good quality, card quality. Like... This, all these cards are insanely good. Um, like Blue Layer, it's when it's normal or special, you add a Super Quant card from your deck to your hand. Oh my god, am I playing a mirror? If I'm playing a mirror, this is going to be good and bad. Okay, he's Ghost Ogre-ing. Um, 
I was about to say, the the mirror is the only matchup you don't want to make Magnus against because it's affected, unaffected by everything except Super Quant cards. So in the mirror match, if you make Magnus, they can out it with any of their guys like this or the Book of Moon dude. Um, like they can out it with those cards because he'll be affected by them. Uh, he can affect himself. This card can affect him. A lot of different things can actually just happen. Um, but basically, this guy, if you summon it, you're attempting to tower as your opponent. And this video is kind of short, so I'm going to go ahead and go back in just to try and pull this off again because it's strangely consistent in this particular build. Alright, so let's see if this works well enough again the second time. Ooh, I actually get to choose to go first. Um, this hand is still fairly, fairly good um, in the essence of I can Brilliant Fusion and I can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and activate Brilliant Fusion just in case he does have a maxi. Uh, in which case I could chain the E-Tally, but a lot of the times on stream I was literally going off into Maxi and giving my opponents, like, I was giving them, like, eight cards and their decks could not out the Magnus. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous some of the things that you end up doing. Uh, but Trick Clown will come back, that'll usually end up being another material for, uh, for the green Xyz. Uh, I don't know their actual names. I just, I know them as their colors. I mean, the main deck monsters are very easy because it's literally blue layer, green layer, red layer. But the Exceeds have like some weird, like, extra name. Uh, but <laughs> Fairy Alphan is insanely good. Like, oh my god, this card is broken. Um, I really want to get the, I want to get, I want to hit red layer off of this, oddly enough. Uh, so if I hit red layer, then I'm going to be able to... Let's see, if I hit red layer, if I hit blue or green, I'll obviously just be able to summon it and overlay um, with either. But if I hit red layer, if red layer gets hit, I'll be able to um, add back the green layer that goes to grave, and then I'll be able to normal summon it, and then I'll be able to make the rank 4, I'll be able to make the rank 5. Okay, green layer, that's not ideal, but it does work. Um, do I want to use blue layer's effects? No. So red layer can special summon a card. Um, so I can summon blue layer back, or I can summon the fairy. The fairy will just copy this. Um, so in a sense, that's almost a bit better. So yeah, we'll do that. So I won't be able to make Magnus this turn, but I will be able to make the Book of Moon. Uh, the Book of Moon Xyz, plus... Um, I will be able to make the Book of Moon Xyz, plus I will be able to have double strike set. Oh, this can't activate its effect. That's going to be an issue. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to use this field spell a little bit sooner than I thought I was going to, but still fine because I can utilize this to suck up uh, the monster. See, I'm still making mistakes with this deck. I'm still learning this deck, very much so. Um, so now instead of two strikes, I only have one. But I still have an MST to back it up, uh, and I have this Book of Moon. Uh, because the monster that you summon off red layer can't activate its effect, so I literally should have gotten blue layer, because blue layer would have just been able to go into the Xyz. Um, what? Um... What is this again? Oh, it's that. I see what I'm doing. I am just getting absolutely destroyed in terms of what I'm doing. But that actually could work out better for me. Um, this is what? You can you can attach a super quantum monster. That's what it is. This is a super quantal, which the it's the only main deck card that's super quantal. All the all the Xyz monsters are super quantal, while these are super quantums, the main deck monsters. So I was trying to suck this up under it to be a material because I couldn't use anything for anything else, but, you know, it turns out, can't do that. So I ended up just Book of Mooning it, and then uh, maybe I can flip it next turn if I protect it with the Strike as well as the uh, the uh, Green Xyz, and then I'll be able to tribute it and activate its effect, hopefully. Um, hopefully. Uh, Spell Shattering Arrow? Really? Okay. Well, damn. Tell me how you really feel. Um, now that sucks, because now I have to out the Field Spell in a different way, but... He has terraforming for Cyframe Circuit. Oh, easy. Okay, Cyframes. Damn, man. Not even a real matchup. Not even a real threat. Um, that's probably going to be Cyframe. Well, I think I'm okay with. I think I am okay with this being here. I would rather not deal with this right now. Because I can just Solemn Strike uh, whatever, um, whatever he activates. But blue layer can shuffle cards back, so I'll shuffle back the field spell, I'll shuffle back one of the blue layers, and I will also shuffle back one of the green layers, because that's the only one that there's only two of in the deck. Uh, everyone else, there's already two of it there after this after this resolves. 
So, that's an instant fusion. That's really good. Uh, so, let's see. If I flip this, am I able to activate it? Yes, it frees it from its binds of the red layer. Uh, so, we'll reveal red layer, green layer, and blue layer. Again, you basically just want to reveal those, and one gets specialed, and you just do things based off what the other ones are. Blue layer. Okay. This is workable. Uh, because with blue layer, I'll be able to get the search for... I'll be able to get the search for the field spell. Um, this lets me special summon. So I've already got this, and I've already got this um, this blue one here. So I actually probably want to summon this, but I could actually just search uh, the red layer and tribute summon it and add uh, a card back to my hand in that method. Um, hmm. That's the that's the question here. Is do I want to do that? Because I can instant fusion Norden. Yeah, I'll get this back. I'll just make more of the uh, more of the Book of Moon and stuffs. Because um, this will be able to just go into all of its nonsense and everything will be fine and dandy there. Because I can tribute this because it's literally unnecessary being there. And so even if you're not making Magnus, like I've said, these cards are all incredibly high quality. Um, these can't attack when they don't have materials. So, literally, I'm going to normal summon this red layer by tributing this, and red layer's effect will activate, and I'll get to add back a card. Uh, so I'll add back, um, I can add back red layer, but that doesn't seem to be horribly worth, or yes it will, it will be worth. Um, and you'll see why in a second, because there's a lot of little niche things that you can do with this deck. Um, specifically regarding like green layer's interaction, because green layer lets you draw cards and you can trigger them on your opponent's turn because these all have graveyard effects, as if they weren't already absurd enough. Uh, um, hmm. Well, let's see here. What is this? This is... Activate the spell card. Um, I will go ahead and strike that, sir. So, you can have that not be a thing. Uh, so what I could do is I could either Norden here, or I can Panzer Dragon and just make the red, um, red rank 5. Uh, but if I Norden here, that actually lets me further my play string, because I can Norden into the green layer, and then when green layer goes to grave, it will let me discard red layer and draw a card, but then red layer will trigger bringing back the green layer, uh, so it's just a way to cycle cards. Um, in fact, uh, have I already used red layer's grave effect this turn? I think I have. Um, pretty sure I have. Yeah, I did, because I brought back the blue layer, so I don't want to do that right away. But I will overlay these into these two, into this uh, other green exceeds. Because these, these aren't restricted. You can literally just use them once per turn based off how many you have. Um, and that's really good. But for this, uh, I'll attack with this one just to see if there's a beta. Uh, but even if there is a beta, what I can do is I can just, uh, I can chain this on his circuit so he doesn't get anything from it uh, in terms of NXCs. Uh So yeah, I can chain this and destroy circuit. So that's not an issue. Uh, so he'll end my battle phase, he'll kill this, my Trick Clown will come back. And, uh, and do I want to use Blue Layer's effect? Yes. Do I want to use Trick Clown's effect? Yes. So like at this point, uh, Blue Layer is going to shuffle back cards, so I'm going to shuffle these back because I've already got two on board. I'm going to shuffle this back as well. I'm going to shuffle, oh, I'll shuffle a Blue Layer back. Um, all my Red Layers are in circulation, but I've got another Blue Layer under this that can trigger. So. There's really no point in having to try and waste it, basically. All of these cards are incredibly good at grinding. Like, incredibly good at grinding. These are going to get banished. Yeah, I don't care about any of this. Um, the one that has the ones under it that I care about has been preserved, because now I can just Book of Moon you, and I can draw a card, cycle my red out, get the green back, make another rank four. Um, as soon as this... Yeah, this isn't resolving, sir. Uh, this is not happening. That's getting booked. This will activate discarding red layer. I draw a new card. Red layer's effect will trigger getting back the green layer. <laughs> uh, so it's just a nice little way to float. This deck is very, very good at grinding. Um, strangely enough, it's one of the only decks um, that's been printed in a long time where the cards can miss timing. They're normal When they're normal with special summoned effects, they're actually win optional effects. Um, so they can miss timing, strangely enough. But it's fine. Uh, Zeta, sure, sure, man, I can make another one. I'ma kill you. It's easy. You played Psyframes. Ooh, look at this. All right, 
So, let's see. I can actually just make Magnus here. I can make Magnus, uh, but I'm probably going to wait until I am able to do some other nonsense. But we'll make this. We'll instant fusion the Panzer Dragon out. And that gives us access into the Red Xyz that makes the uh, makes the Magnus thing possible. But uh, yeah, because this isn't game uh, with with all of that, sadly. But what I can do is okay. There's none in grave, and there are two under this. There's one here, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight. So that'd be eight different names if I made Magnus right now. So I just, I'm just trying to conserve the names of what I know I want to handle and deal with. So we'll pop this, we'll attack with all these, and then we'll just main phase two make Magnus. Um, because this is a lot of damage as is, but Magnus wouldn't have been game either. But Magnus cannot be affected by Zeta. And Magnus can spin the Zeta in response to it. In fact, all of these guys can just respond to the Zeta. Uh, that's not an issue. But still... Uh, Magnus is just better than any of these are on the board, especially in such a simplified game state, uh, basically. But yeah, we'll trigger this, overlay these all into Big Man, Gnis, um, Megazord up, form the Dragonzord. Alright, so now, his Zeta's gonna come back, as well as my thing, and as soon as he tries to, like, he can't use this on Magnus. He can't. As soon as he tries to end turn... I'll just spin his Zeta, um, but he can blink the Zeta out as well, so like it doesn't actually benefit him because he's going to die next turn anyway because he can't get rid of this. He can get rid of this all he wants, in fact, e neither of the ones that he can get rid of, even if he could get rid of both of these, it doesn't help him in any way, because even if he could spin this, um, if he could spin this, like all of the effects that are under it trigger, the blue layer, the red layer, the green layer, they all trigger. Well, the green layer won't trigger because I don't have a, uh, a super quantum card in hand to discard, but I mean, you get my point. Uh, like, everything just gets recycled. Oh, baby! Uh, well, see, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna activate this. Uh, we're gonna activate this on... Hmm, blue layer. And attempt to spin Zeta. Okay, so Zeta, well, that's unaffected, man. Um, so I'll spin my own dude back to the extra deck so that it doesn't die. <laughs> just because I'd rather have it there. Uh, and then this will trigger putting this, this, and I've got a red under the Magnus, so I'll put those back. Like, Jesus Christ, this deck just doesn't run out of resources because of the way the blue layer is worded. Like, you literally get to shuffle everything back. You can play as long a game as you want. This deck is really, really cool in how it was designed. Um, oh my god, the fairy. You know what? I don't even care. I'm gonna poke him for game. I don't even want to see what he would give me. I don't even want to see it. Uh, because this is just game. But anyway... That is basically, like, the gist of the Super Quantum deck. I want to do another video that will go up today as well, but I really, really like this deck. Uh, I never knew I never knew how to play it before. I never wanted to dedicate time into it because I didn't think it was, like, really worth. I guess you can call me a sheep, but I knew the deck had good effects, and I thought the deck could be good, but, I mean, results-oriented minds kind of gravitate towards things once they've... Once they've been shown a degree of success but anyway as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do links are in the description of my facebook pages if you want to connect with me chat with me whatever my twitch channel if you want to follow me and get notified when i go on live streams and then my twitch alerts donation link if you want to donate to me and support me directly that would be greatly appreciated it's not required but it would definitely be appreciated any money that goes towards it from my youtube earnings and twitch is going towards a new computer setup in the future and i'm trying to save up for that um, I'll figure out some like GoFundMe thing in the future, maybe. But as of right now, that's the only thing I have set up. So if you want to use it, you can. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Uh, just let me know what you guys think about the Super Quantum Deck in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, take care.